Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I am Rod Ngonzi. Let's take a look at the top stories tonight. calls for market integration, wants youth against sectarianism, government to regulate human organ donation and transplant, while Bank of Uganda increases the central bank rate from 7.5% to 8.5%, and cricketer Simon Sessazi uh, rewarded Boyd ahead of ICC CWC LGEB. Hello, once again, let's dig into it. President Yori Museveni has challenged African youth to embrace prosperity improvement initiatives through wealth creation for economic progress of the continent. Now, the president warns young people against tribalism and uh, that and discrimination against. I beg your pardon, he wants peop young people against tribalism and discrimination, which is against the values of market integration and development of Africa. He was officially opening the third African peer review mechanism at Speak Resort Munyonyo in Kampala. Potential. It the other path would give her the tools to unleash her full potential. It was a call for action as opposed to expression of grief as youth across the continent of Africa met in Kampala, Uganda's capital city. They came together during the third African peer review mechanism youth conference. The event has brought together youth and pan-Africanists. It is an important part of our effort as young people and as a continent to tackle instability, conflict, corruption and maladministration. We continue to advocate that young people must be seen, they must be heard and included in every process that concerns their future and particularly their needs. In agreement with these youth were some diplomats who described the future of the world as an obligation of the youth. Youth have a major role to play. They are eager to learn and to help our societies to find innovative solutions to the many challenges and problems that we face. Mainstreaming of youth in African democracy and good governance is an area that we take seriously at the APRM because of our mandate in the African Union family. The message of the day rotated around the relevance of youth in both national and international development. The statistics in Africa speak volumes about the need to reposition the youth and put them at the center stage of the development agenda. There's need to empower the youth to participate in decision making through balanced investments in social and economic policies. Upon arrival, <laughs> President Yori Museveni carried a similar message challenging youth to embrace wealth creation programs. In addition to biology, you need ideology. And ideology, number one, our, our experience is that, number one, patriotism. Love each of your countries. Don't allow opportunists to, to, to disturb, to, to divide your countries along sectarian lines. Secondly, love Africa, Pan-Africanism. Thirdly, you must change. You must become modern. Your families must become modern. You cannot go on with the, 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 the pre-capitalist pre mode, mode of life. You must, become, you must build a middle class and a skilled working class. 
That's why we talk of social economic transformation. Museveni decried pockets of tribalism in Africa, which he says compromises the continent's quest for market integration. Because once the market is integrated, if I produce a good here in Uganda or a service and it is consumed by anybody who wants to do so within the population of Africa now, which is now 1.6 billion a year, there's no way you can fail to, to, to grow, the business to grow, and by the business growing, you employ more people, you pay more taxes, taxes are used to solve other problems in the country, then we shall see, we shall say that these are youth who know what, what, who know, who know what, they, are do, what they are doing. To achieve this, it will require strategic security, a message that Museveni emphasized to the African youth. Because now Africa is the center of, of chaos now, today. What is happening in, uh, in Mali, Burkina Faso, even Nigeria, Niger, sometimes Cameroon, some parts of Chad, Central African Republic, Somalia, Congo, DRC, all, all chaos, chaos. So how do we create strategic security? This is the second mission for everybody, but starting with the youth, because you are the ones who, are, who have got longer to stay here on earth before you go to either heaven or hell, whichever. The five-day symposium is being held under the theme African Union at 20, repositioning the youth agenda for a transformative continent. Henry Okrut, UBC. As I return to class following an announcement by the Uganda Teachers Union UNATO that it has suspended the industrial action over the issue of salary increment. The General Secretary UNATO, Baguma Filbert, says they suspended their sit-down strike to continue negotiating with the government on fulfilling their 2018 collective beginning agreement. Teachers in government schools are back to class. It follows the suspension of an industrial action after art teachers demanded government to fulfill the 2018 collective bargaining agreement. The teachers have not been teaching for almost three weeks. Unlike other schools like Chitante Hill and Mengo Senior Secondary School, UBC engaged on this issue in vain. Chitante Primary School Social Studies teacher Wamboka Vicent said about 66 teachers have resumed teaching. But as we talk and have moved you around, the staff is back. Taught three lessons in one. We have covered how many lessons? I started as early as seven. By 9.20, my lesson ends. I had covered that. So even the other colleagues did the same. However, because of the stress and psychological torture teachers have gone through, it will take them some time to settle down. Of course, some have gone back today. Others will continue to move. And the teaching will take some time to be the real teaching because the environment is still hostile. The engagement teachers had with the president left them with no option but to suspend the industrial action and continue negotiations with government on fulfilling their collective bargain agreement. So he was also having a slogan, no class, no talks. We had to look at both sides, either to remain on industrial action and close the gates of discussions with the president, 
or to resume teaching and then continue with the discussions. UNATO says government is responsible to pay for the lost time of the learners in the last three weeks of their industrial action because it failed to act to its promise. And therefore nobody should blame the teachers for the lost time. It is the responsibility of government because it took decision without looking at the consequences. The leadership of UNATO emphasizes that although their industrial action is not based on government increasing salaries of science teachers, but collective bargain agreement that is expiring this financial year, the classroom situation of having teachers highly motivated and others highly demotivated is not good. This what government immediately implement the collective bargain agreement which stated a teacher in primary school gets 1.3 million shillings, a diploma holder teaching sciences in secondary gets 3 million, diploma teaching arts gets 2.7 million, while the graduates with bachelors teaching arts gets 4.5 million and one of sciences 4.8 million shillings. I'm Navka Farida and Stephen Kalisia in Kampala. The you know, government has tabled the Uganda Human Organ Donation and Transplant Bill 2021, seeking to establish a legal framework for regulation of human organ, cell and tissue donations in Uganda. As Parliament resumes, a private member's bill entitled the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2022 was also tabled for the first reading. Anita Aneta Mung has implored MPs to prepare for a marathon session. Three actual participation in committee, in committee and the house. Some of you end up in the committee, you don't come to the house. You forget that we have a rule that if you miss 15 times, we can be able to get you out of the house. As Parliament returns from recess, the Prime Minister has been tasked to avail a detailed report on the concerns of teachers following a recent industrial action. Let's not preempt it. We want to understand this uh, kind of inequality because if uh, not all of us are science people, but we are here. Government has introduced the Uganda Human Organ and Transplant Bill 2021 with a move to establish a legal framework for the regulation of organ, cell and tissue donation and transportation in Uganda. The Minister for Health, Dr. General Thaching, asserts that the bill intends to protect the dignity and identity of every person and guarantee without discrimination, respect for his or her integrity and other rights and fundamental freedoms with regard to donation and transportation of human organs, tissues and cells of human origin. The bill is also looking at ways of having uh, storage for the organs, but also ensure that we address the issues of illicit trade that people keep on talking about every now and then. The second bill tabled is a private member's bill titled the Constitution Amendment Bill 2022, tabled by Chibanda South MP Jacob Karubanga. This seeks to amend the third schedule to the Constitution to recognize four new indigenous communities including Bachingwe, Baziba, Bagawo, Maragori, Mosopiek, and Sabot. However, the MPs have questioned the fate of the Constitutional Review Commission, which seems to have been left in suspense. The Constitutional Amendment Bill 2022 be read the first time. I beg to lay. For us, it has been argued that frequent amendment of the Constitution enables ad adaptation and changing of realities. We ought it to be live to the changes that we should have a constitutional review commission. Does this process start and die, then start, collapse, start, collapse? Where are we exactly? I think today we need a clear answer. The proposal has been forwarded to cabinet. It's awaiting cabinet discussion. Shamim Naiga, Gloria Bitarinji, UBC News.
UPDF has pledged to heighten training of staff on promotion of human rights. This is in response to persistent allegations that security forces and the UPDF in particular is a ring leader in violating human rights. The Chief of Legal Services at the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Brigadier General Professor Godard Wasinja, says the UPDF will perfect its image. Uganda Law Society has released the second quarterly rule of law report with three thematic areas, transparency and accountability, the state of human rights, and due process and climate of legality that in totality indicate that Uganda registered a decline in rule of law. The Uganda Law Report 2022, second quarter. In the report, security forces were faulted for fueling human rights violation. Under the state of human rights, we had the violation of, right, of the right to freedom of speech and expression, um, where we noted continued disruption of peaceful demonstration of supporters of opposition political parties by armed security forces. We also saw um, the enjoyment of the freedoms to assemble and associate being infringed upon heavily during this time and there are various examples. However, the Chief of Legal Services at the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Brigadier General Professor Godadi Businje, recognized presence of some wrong elements in the force, saying there is training to correct the image. The training is ongoing. It has been I've been in the army. Uh, most of my life and I've undergone human rights training, a rule of law training, but we have got specialized training sessions for both commanders and uh, other ranks and we have got specific schools where we do military training and the rule of law concepts are tr uh, part and parcel of the training programs. That's why I was telling the law society by uh, saying armed forces we are not being since, uh, meaning, uh, clear to ourselves who is the member of the armed forces we are talking about. If it was UPDF, then you say a UPDF or person, person. If it was the police, then police. Because if you say armed forces, you, you may get lost looking for uh, following up a case. UPDF is investigating cases of alleged human rights violation, like the infamous Kakwenza case. And you know where Kakwenza is yourself. He's not around to prosecute it in any case. How do we get evidence from somebody who is not around? Because the investigation will mean that we also need to talk to him. But we don't have him, he's not in the country to the best of my knowledge. And I don't think we, we are going to follow him to go, to go and ask him what happened to him. He should avail himself, make statement, lead us to the root of the, the crux of the matter. Yes. And on recommendations, the need to expedite passing of the witness protection bill took a center stage. Doka Skimono, UBC News. Now, Bank of Uganda has increased the central bank red CBR by another percentage point to 8.5 percent. It's in a bid to contain the skyrocketing inflation. This decision was taken at an extraordinary monetary policy committee meeting held on Monday, the 4th of July. In a statement, Dr. Michael Etingago, the deputy governor, said that inflation continues to rise, largely influenced by external cost pressures stemming from higher global food and energy prices persisting global production and distribution challenges as well as rising domestic food crops uh, crop prices and the dry weather across the country let's take a look at the extraordinary monetary policy committee mpc meeting held in july 2022 the bank of uganda increased the central bank rate cbr by one percentage point to 8.5 percent. Inflation continues to rise, largely influenced by external cost pressures stemming from higher global food and energy prices, persisting global production and distribution challenges, as well as rising domestic food crop prices due to dry weather across the country. 
the annual headline and core inflation rose to 6.8 percent and 5.5 percent in June 2022, up from 6.3 percent and 5.1 percent in May 2022, respectively. Um, inflation is forecast to peak in the second quarter of 2023 before gradually declining to stabilize around the medium term target of 5% by mid 2020, by 2024. And this is, of course, premised on the fact that in 2022, uh, the inflation was slightly higher than the 7.2% and 6.1% that were projected in June 2022, a forecast round. Now, the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bariomonsi, has presented cabinet decisions before the press at Chiganda Media Centre. Uh, the Minister revealed that government has decided to make Kiswahili compulsory and examinable in schools. Government has considered making Kiswahili language compulsory in primary and secondary schools to implement the 21st East African Community Directive to adopt Kiswahili as an official language of the East African community. One of the reasons why Uganda has been slow in adopting Kiswahili is our history. I think in the past regimes, when the army was ant people, Swahili was the language of the army. Now, so Uganda has developed a negative attitude towards Swahili. Government will work out modalities to recruit Kiswahili teachers in the long run. Various tutors will be engaged to train members of parliament, the press, and members of cabinet. For instance, we agreed that every, on every cabinet day, we are going to have lessons. We start covered at 10, but we agreed from 9 to 10, we shall have one hour lesson of Swahili. For us, we made a recommendation and directed the Ministry of Education. Now the Ministry has to sit and work it out. Definitely it can't be this term, because the school calendar is going on. But depending on how fast they, they move, then we can look at like the next academic year. Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development will soon present a report on the status of Ugandan workers in the Middle East. This will inform government to formalize the employment arrangement for easy monitoring of migrant workers. The report released by Uganda Law Reform Commission, conducted from July 2020 to June 2022 on externalization of Uganda labor, revealed that there is lack of substantive legislation on externalization of Ugandan labor, gross abuse and violation of human rights, and 28 persons died abroad in 2021 alone during the peak of COVID-19. When the minister brings the paper in the two weeks' time, because we gave the minister two weeks, that's when we shall have a very deep discussion of the issues and then we streamline the whole process. Because we are saying, yes, there is unemployment and uh, going to work outside the country in itself is not bad, but we have a duty to ensure that Ugandans are safe wherever they are, whether they are working in the country or outside the country. Ugandans will also join the rest of the world to commemorate the World Population Day on the 11th of July 2022 in Kumi District on the theme Mindset Change for Wealth Creation, Ending Child Marriages and Teenage Pregnancies. Ivan Kahua and Miriam Womjisha, UBC News. Now, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has bid farewell to four of its staff and acknowledged their duties for serving above self. Managing Director, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Winston Agawa, commended the services the staff offered to the corporation. 
The retirees include Namsisi Christine from the television department, Odiambo Peter, Chichoncho Roda, and Sheikh Mugwanya Abdul Majid from the radio department. The managing director of Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Winston Agava, commended the work exhibited by the seniors in their line of duty. Agava said the corporation is to process its retirement benefits. We're going to fast track to make sure that uh, your benefits are paid. It's been unfortunate that in the past there have been delays. But we are very optimistic. The board has been very steadfast on this. Anyone retiring, even those that are still here, we are very optimistic that before this year ends, even the areas of gratuity and NSSF are all going to be paid to zero. So I, I think that is very good news. We want to thank the government. We want to thank our minister. We want to thank uh, all the stakeholders who are making sure that uh, we prepare a better national broadcaster with the human resource that is well facilitated. If, however little it is, it should trickle in at the right time. So as you retire, please just patiently wait. Your packages are going to be there. Director of Finance, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Peter Kagwa, thanked the retirees for planning ahead. But most importantly, he said at 60, Oh, retiring does not mean that you are tired. Many of you are still very active, and uh, we advise that when you go out there, you can even be recalled actually on a contract because media, media has a lot of opportunities. You can even work on your own in media. So it is not like uh, for us who are traditional public servants. In the ministries, when he exit, he have exited. Susan Muhumoza, Director of Human Resources and Administration, said the journey to retirement is a new chapter that everyone deserves to prepare for. Of course, we retire from work and not life. So we just stop working, this 8 to 5 job, but there's a lot to do in life that we go into. Then we also have dreams. We've been dreaming. If I do this, I'll get this. If I do this, I'll do this. So this is the time for us to actualize these dreams. Odiambo Peter, a retiree from the radio department, expressed gratitude for the time spent at the corporation during his tenure. So I'm now a home person, and as I told you, there is something ongoing. So we fit it in properly. And you see, it's important for you, maybe I'm preempting what I'm going to say next, uh, when we have my session. Communication is very important with the family. Chichon Choroda Asimwe, also a retiree, said she has now ventured into other activities to give room to the new wine. I used to work. And we retired our beds at midnight every day. At this point, I want to thank my parents. And uh, at times, I think if I was brought up by my stepmother, I would think that the woman doesn't love us and is mistreating us. But this was our real mother, our real father. And we used to work all as a family. We would not leave anybody behind. The dad will be there, the mom will be there, everybody will be there. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. Bore Chewaka, na MTN Momo Nyabo, Echura Kuri Chunka. Amazina Ganje, Nebanyata Kansi Meklofas, Nimbela Lugazika Kobambara. Ninye muhanguzwe motoka ya MTN Momo Nyabo Waka elizoba nye na hangura motoka ninsima MTN Munonga ninsima abantu bona abezumbira mu kintweti ekyo kubasa kufishyaho ebirabo bya MTN mwebale Munonga muhangare mubereho Waka na MTN Momo Nyabo ekyora kuri chunka tawe mitware ebiri no kweyongerayo a mobile money yao oba se kuba mwabanya mu chabara ya hangurire Toyota Succeed ishatu na na sente Mtu haba hangu za baru kiken kumi hibiri buru wiki Ni tuza kwa ye moto kabire ni ina Na na sente za mobile money Eziru kure yango buhumbi bubiri do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mode Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602.
Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You say I was just trying to uh, get the documents to register for air telemanagement. Yeah. You don't need the documents. You just say the full register. Oh, What's going on here? He sells things from the shop, and behind my back, he gets the money and gives it to his Bugal friends. <laughs> <laughs> but just get out of money pay, so that all money comes direct to your business wallet, and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just dial star 185 star 10, star 10, hash, and now you are on. No waiting. <laughs> huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. Now, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. I remember the lockdown. When the streets were empty and our lives disrupted. When businesses closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance. Hospitals were full. We lost loved ones, jobs and hope. Our children couldn't study anymore. We cannot let this happen. Again, we should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a tenor of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Welcome back. You're still watching News Tonight. Now, the Inspector General of Police, Martin Okozochola, has in a statement denied, I beg your pardon, has distanced himself from a fraudster who was using his name to extort money from the public. The criminal Dan Nkosere was arrested by soldiers from Magamaga Barracks after a complaint by the CEO of New Beginnings International Ministries, Isove Henry. Now, the IGP statement was delivered by the police spokesperson, Fred Enanga. Iganga Regional Police has registered two cases of fraud and impersonation. This emerged from the financial misunderstanding between the contractor already done and the chief executive officer of New Beginnings International Ministries. At least 150 million shillings was stolen. Uh, donor money amounting to Uganda shillings 150 million. Um, that was uh, donated to New Beginnings International Ministries. This money was meant for buying a, a project site for construction of a maternity ward in Iganga district. Engineer already done was contracted by New Beginnings International Ministries to construct a maternity ward as a donation at Iganga Health Center. Police are investigating the agreement after establishing that two contracts were signed for the job. Uh, New Beginnings International Ministries uh, entered into a, a contract agreement with Olele Dan, but they signed two contract agreements. There is an agreement of 176 million, then there is also a second agreement of 75 million. And uh, uh, from the facts that we've gathered, Olele Dan received 
35 million only for the construction of that project site. Other investigations on the circumstances under which Isowa Henry lost money while visiting the site. The IGP John Matanzoko Thochol has directed all territorial commanders to take note of increasing impersonation in the names of big personalities while others use security attires to commit crime. All our territorial commanders have been asked to remain steadfast while carrying out their duties and avoid getting duped by fraudsters and criminals who would wish to uh, misuse or use the office of the IGP and even other high-ranking uh, security personnel and government officials. It is said that Orede Dan is from Toro district, a neighbor to the IGP's ancestral home, but are not relatives. So we wish to refute the claim. It is totally fall uh, fall fallacious. The IGP and his family categorically reject the claim as false and an insult to the family. Police warned the public of increasing cases of impersonation with illegal roadblocks and gunmen on major highways. Abdul Nasir Lubwama and Lydia Chomukama, UBC News. Now the Katikiro of Uganda, Charles Peter Maiga, has advised the people in Kalangala to consider their lives as irreplaceable and thus engage in prevention of the spread of HIV and AIDS on the island. The Katikiro is in Kalangala on a sensitization campaign against HIV and AIDS. The HIV and AIDS prevalence rate is 18.2, higher above the national prevalence of 6.2. Uganda AIDS Commission and Buganda Kingdom are in Kalangala Islands on an awareness campaign to reduce the spread of HIV in Kalangala. Currently, the HIV AIDS prevalence is 18%, high above the national prevalence of 6.4%. Katikiro Charles Peter Maiga, together with the Executive Director, Uganda AIDS Commission, their first spot was at St. Simeon Bugoma Mapera Primary School and met parents and pupils. The Katikiro condemned premarital sex among teenagers. When the, when the calf is at that stage, at the age of conceiving, it gets on heat and the bull smells, I think, some things. It can't control itself. But we are human beings. We've got the brains. The difference between us and animals is that the portion of our brains to our bodies is large. That's the difference. We're supposed to think for ourselves. At Kasenkulu Healthy Center 2 was a healthy camp for testing different diseases. Katikiro Charles Peter Maiga blamed sexual promiscuity, which has become a common activity among the islanders. You can choose uh, life or you can choose to die. Usually it's at 2 p.m. The priest comes and says mass, wears purple. You've seen them? And we sing fuba, fuba, a guru. Apologies for that. Science teachers and education managers operating in hard-to-reach areas of Arua, Moroto and Kalangala have commended government's implementation of the new curriculum. This was during the annual secondary schools internal science fairs and exhibitions organized by the Uganda Science Education Program. Despite government and civil society efforts in promoting the teaching and learning of science-based subjects, many teachers, students and parents still urge that they are for academic failures. To reverse the scenario, Uganda Science Education Program USEP is popularizing the teaching and learning of science subjects in hard rich areas and refugee settlements. During the Inter-Science Fair at St. Mary's Adiofi Girls Secondary School in Arua, the Arua District Senior Education Officer Ronald Rani and Moroto Municipality counterpart William Isuru said that the new curriculum will provide a paradigm shift in the skilling Ugandan agenda. One of the things that we are aspiring for as a country is the creativity and innovation. We want to build lifelong learners through our education system. And where there is a platform for these children to demonstrate the capacities to innovate, to create, to manufacture things at this level, 
as a local government of Arua district and Arua city, we are very pleased. Very important and it's what we have been advocating for. We don't want to, to have students who get wasteful after their senior four or senior six. Bishop Dunstan Kalangala Secondary School Head Teacher Catherine Kabasoka and Moroto High School SS Head Teacher Chebet said that both the intervention of USEP and the new curriculum is on track. But, uh, for example, the lab rules were not clear, that the timetables were not clearly displayed, but with the training there was a better and improved attitude. And now over 80 judicial officers of various ranks have been inaugurated to ensure that equitable justice prevails in Uganda. While uh, officiating the inauguration, the Chief Justice Alfonso Winyadolo urged the judicial officers to uphold the rule of law and follow the judicial code of conduct during execution of their work. You have now earned the title. Over 80 judicial officials of various ranks have been sworn in with an aim of ensuring equitable and timely justice in the country. Among those sworn in are grade one magistrates, deputy registrars, chief magistrates, and senior principal magistrates. I, Adoko Joe Fay, solemnly affirm and will do right to all manner of people as by law established. Without fear, all favor, affection, all ill will, so help me God. The Chief Justice Alifan Sominidon cautioned the judicial officials against corruption that tarnishes the judiciary image. The choice is yours whether you've come into the judiciary to make a difference. I would want to believe that each one of us here who has taken oath today and those who, take, who took oath before and have been promoted are sworn within themselves to make the judiciary a proud institution, one which everybody respects, one which everybody knows if you go to, you'll get justice. They're also equipped the judicial officials with principles of ethics in judiciary. And promote reconciliation. The best rendering of justice is when you bring harmony. When you can achieve a win-win situation, the Deputy Chief Justice Richard Ibutera urged the appointed judicial officials to work with integrate at their workstations. The people who come before you, to them, every case is important. Handle the case that is before you for the value it is because it matters to each of the parties individually. And your duty is to deliver justice to everybody. Laziness and mediocrity are vices that kill employees potential. If you know you fall in that category, you have no future in the judiciary, and I emphasize that. Now, the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development will formulate a guideline for the general public on implementation of the parish development model. Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Betty Amongi, told UBC that the PDM tour experience during their recent nationwide tour needed popularization of the program. For the past two weeks, ministers, legislators and technocrats have been on a nationwide tour to popularize the parish development model. From the 171 local governments that have been concluded, we have uh, realized and confirmed that, number one, all the circles, that is the cooperative under which money will be disseminated, they have all been formed, they have all been registered, and all the accounts have been open in all the parishes throughout the country. Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Betty Amongi, told UBC that the program has been widely embraced. The people actually are saying if all government programs were inched on a parish model, it would be easier and much better because for them, already within their communities, they are into voluntary savings and lending associations. And most of the areas reports coming are that 
the population has welcomed the program because they are in control, they are in the driving seat, and they are saying if this one fails, then it will no longer be a blame for government, it will be them. Although there are some questions raised by the beneficiaries, government is ready to pay attention to them. There were concerns from the rural people that uh, you are instructing us to lend this money to the poor of the poorest, and yet you are also instructing us to recover this money. And their concern is if you lend to the poor people without any asset, even let's say without a chicken, without a goat, how will they refund? And if they fail to refund, how will they ensure that the money is recovered? Some challenges were also registered along the tour. In some circles and groups, there have been elite capture. You find a former member of parliament is also a chairperson of a parish development, a, a parish committee, a circle. Uh, you find a former minister, you find uh, teachers, you find a civil servants. So this we had to correct and we are going to write a circular to indicate that those who do not fall within the subsistence agriculture cannot take leadership in the circle. With Ingo, UBC News. Mm. And Kagadi RDC Nicholas Kamukama has tasked parents to nurture children well. This was during the Faith of Unity followers celebration of the Day of the Child at the Faith's headquarters at Kapiemi in Kagadi district. It's almost 34 years since the founder of Faith of Unity, Omukama Obusobazibisaka, helped a lady who had been pregnant for seven years to give birth, calling for celebration. <laughs> This happened in 1986 after a healthy baby Omhereza Asimwe was born after Obusobozibisaka's intervention. <laughs> this then led to the Dove the Child in the Faith and is annually celebrated as the day and also known as the Dove Flowers with merrymaking and prayers. <laughs> On the same function, Obu Sobozibisaka applauded President Yori Museveni for all he's done for Uganda in terms of religion and importantly for the Toyota Land Cruiser V8 that he gifted him on his 93rd birthday. Kagadi resident and district commissioner Nicholas Kamukama Kaine tasked parents to nurture their children. Take care of children. Take good care of children. They are the future leaders. They are the disciplined people, if we discipline them. <laughs> And with that, we take a quick break. We'll return with more. This is Mr. Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mult Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone network.
A good school doesn't tolerate violence against children. Because a good school equals a better life. Raising voices. Water gives life. Water is life. But not all water is created equal. Refresh yourself with the new quality Nirvana packaged drinking water and fuel you and your passion to go further in life. Visit a shop near you and grab a 250ml at 500 shillings, 500ml at 1000 shillings, 1.5 litres at 2000 shillings or the 20 litre jumbo bottle at 19,000 shillings. Nirvana is a product of Crown Beverages Limited, the makers of Pepsi products. A World Cup in the desert? The first one in the Middle East. The first to be held at the end of the year? That's crazy. Get ready for spectacular moves. High flying saves. Unbelievable goals. Out of this world celebration. Would you believe it? What a moment here. All 64 matches live. That's over 5,000 action packed minutes of the FIFA 2022 World Cup Qatar. Now that's crazy. Catch all the action only on Supersport, your world of champions. On Gold TV, love it. Welcome back. This is still news tonight. Now in business news, Uganda imports plant and products worth 479 million US dollars and exports products worth 660 million US dollars to different markets. At a national dialogue on pest surveillance in Kampala, the Commissioner Crop Inspection in the Ministry of Agriculture told the meeting that pest surveillance provides information required by trading partners. Now, Uganda ranks 44th rather in the food exports to the EU market but is challenged by pests. We need to have a national technical working group Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries has come up with a national framework for plant pest surveillance and emergency response to overcome a challenge posed by pests. The national pest surveillance systems establish the implementation of safe trade regimes, early pest detection and early response to toxic and seasonal pests like the African armyworm. At a national dialogue on pest surveillance in Kampala, the State Minister for Agriculture, Major Retired Fred Buino Chakulaga, who was represented by the Commissioner, Crop Inspection and Certification, Paul Wambu, noted the pest surveillance provides pest information required by trading partners. We've been having a challenge of uh, false coddling month in our horticultural exports, to especially to the EU. Now this is an important market that uh, brings in export earnings of about, uh, for, for the horticulture sector, of estimated about 200 million US dollars. Now continued detections of this pest in the products on the EU market threatens this, market, this, this export earning because it can lead to the, the market rejection. A senior agriculture inspector in charge of phytosanitary and quarantine, Dr. Tugume Joab says, the new framework on pest surveillance will help the East African region. In this framework, we are proposing that. And this national technical working group on pest surveillance And now in sports, the Four Tibet uh, Real Star Sports Monthly Awards for June have recognized athletes from football, athletics, basketball, netball, golf, and cricket. The MC
today. Uganda Athletics Federation President Dominic Otuchet has appreciated organizers of the Forte Beta Real Star Sports Monthly Award which he says spurs competitiveness. To me, is very, they are very valuable to our sportsmen. They are valuable to the sport, but more so to our athletes, the boys and girls who struggle to win, who struggle to bring glory to Uganda. This was during the award ceremony for the best athletes for the month of June at Road 256 in Lugogo, a Kampala suburb. We need to see you winning every time or every month. If you stop here, then your effort will not be recognized again. So you need to add up more effort. There were awards for Simon Sesazi for excellence in the Cricket League B and a women national team player Fazila Ikwaput who won the football gong. Um, I feel very proud. Uh, it, is, it is one of the biggest platforms in, the, in, in Uganda right now. So it, it feels nice when uh, a sportsman is appreciated. Others awarded a golfer Michael Alunga, runner Zena Rachel Chebet, and basketball youngster Slivia Nantongo, who was pivotal as Uganda's female under 18 side, qualified for the Afro basketball. It means a lot whereby I can't even explain just that I'm feeling happy for this. These awards were started in 2018 and have since come with a plaque and a cash reward. John Burns Sentamu reporting. Well, that does it for news tonight. I'm Roda Ngonzi. And right now, let's catch Uganda taking on Morocco in the African Women's Cup of Nations. Play as a lot is